morning guys uh today we got a 2008 c2 rxt 215 supercharged in here uh customer rode it last summer so it would have been over a year ago uh drove it all summer and towards the end of the season they sank the jet ski and they couldn't get it started uh they towed it back to uh the dock put it on the trailer and then they let it sit they didn't try and get it running to get the water out nothing so it's that well now Instead of a simple flush the motor out, get it running, put some oil in the cylinders, clean things out, get the salt water out, more importantly, um, they let it sit and uh, cause mass ha havoc in the motor. Uh, so, you know, something that could have been easily avoided uh, now is a costly repair. And, you know, as most people know, these motors aren't cheap to rebuild. You got a lot of parts you got to replace. You got torque to yield bolts and things like that. Uh, probably going to need machine work now because we've got pitting in the sleeves. Hopefully, a one over is going to be able to you know work in this motor so we'll see how deep the the rust and corrosion is and we'll go from there but uh before i get into tearing the rest of the motor down i started preliminary tearing parts of it down just to kind of get an idea what was going on here uh i'm going to show you all the carnage so you can see for yourself you know things to avoid don't let it sit if you got salt water in it it's going to cause a lot of problems so we'll start with the engine we got the motor out already um as you can tell Motor wasn't really taken care of very well to begin with. A lot of this paint's off. Someone obviously didn't wash this thing down. They got salt water all, all over it. Um, you know, everything else looks pretty decent parts-wise. I don't see any issues yet until we start tearing it apart. But you can see the blocks got some paint coming off it. It's got a lot of heavy corrosion. But the big issue is the cylinders. So, we got the cylinders here. As you can tell, this cylinder... It's not bad, there was a lot of caked up stuff in here. The walls don't look terrible, they got rust on them. But, you know, we'll bore that out, we'll be able to get that off there. The cylinder head gasket looked pretty good, it doesn't, wasn't leaking or anything. But, it appeared that two of these cylinders didn't have much water in them, it was just salt. But this guy, look at this, it's insane. The, motor, the pistons pitted away. I mean, I've never seen this before. This thing sat for so long and, you know, that's what's gonna happen, it's insane. But, you know, we'll tear it apart and see what we can do. I tr the reason I did this in the first place was I tried to get it running because the person just said it hadn't been running for a while. No one told me that the uh, thing sank initially. So I just assumed that it hadn't been running in a while. I figured I'll get it running for them. Um, you know, got everything started, got the battery charged and all that stuff. But uh, the second I put power to it, you just heard the starter click. And I was like, oh, that's weird. So, you know, I put a wrench on the supercharger, see if we can spin it, and I could feel the clutches just slipping inside. And uh, that's when I knew, you know, there was bigger issues. So we had to tear it apart, we had to pull it out. And now uh, we'll take a look at the head. Head doesn't look terrible. I mean, it looks terrible, but it doesn't appear that anything's rusted. I mean, it looks like with all the water sitting in the bottom, it wasn't too bad. I mean, we'll see when we get this apart. We'll pull these valves out. We're going to obviously, if we can, we'll lap them. If not, we're going to have to get them machined. So we'll go from there. But, you know, this was all the caking, caked up stuff that was, all this white, this was actually in the cylinder. I mean, it was full. I mean, I had to, had to wipe it out of the thing. It was crazy. So now that, uh, you know, we've taken the head off, at least we'll see what the problem, we saw what the problems are. Uh, probably do a time lapse now, just pulling the motor apart. Uh, obviously, a lot of things are going to, have to be replaced so we'll go from there and I'll do a quick time lapse and you'll be able to see everything just a little tip for everyone I know some people know this already but you know if it's your first time doing it it does help get yourself a fluid extractor get all the oil out of this thing before you start tearing it apart because I think the first time I ever did this I made a huge mess I forgot about that so you know definitely get the oil out of this thing first before it tear down Now, one thing I always do on a motor that I'm rebuilding, I always pull the oil filter out. I always check in between the pleats just to see if there's any metal in it. And this motor's got a little bit of metal in that one. I don't know if you could see. It's kind of hard to tell. It's shiny. But usually, when these things are real blown up, you get a ton of metal in these things. And usually, the filter tends to collapse. Trying to find one that has a decent amount of metal in it. 
this motor looks pretty good it's just wear and tear there's a chunk of metal right there if you could see it but this one doesn't look too bad it just kind of looks like normal wear and tear there's no there's not a major amount of metal in here Now this part you want to be a little bit careful because there are some washers in here for the starter and they tend to fall out or at least get stuck to the side of the case. So I'll show you them. All right. That's going to feel like it's a little hard to get off because you got the magneto in here holding the stator. All right. Oh boy. Here's that washer I'm talking about. They tend to get stuck. Goes on the outside of the Bendix right here, like that. Motor doesn't look terrible in here. I mean, there's definitely a little sludge in there. But I don't see any water, so that's a good thing. But, yeah, everything looks pretty decent here. All right. Now these are those dreaded flywheel bolts that everyone talks about, the ones that come loose or they shear off or whatever, uh, that's definitely a must for a replacement. You gotta put an aftermarket or, or new ones in at least. Um, they do break, they've had problems for years. I use the ARP ones or Aquasport, they're still ARPs, they're just rebranded. Um, and I've never had a problem with them, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. Um, so now we're getting into tearing apart the lower uh, bottom end of the motor, we'll get the Bendix out. Uh, stator magnet off, uh, flywheel, countershaft balance, the guides, timing chain, and then we'll flip this over, we'll get the case apart, and we'll take a look at the crank and see what these pistons look like from behind and see what the cylinder cylinders look like from behind. Now, unfortunately, uh, my GoPro had SD card errors and I lost the rest of my footage. Uh, we tore the bottom of the block apart. Um, I pulled off the bottom case um, and surprisingly, everything inside looked pretty good. Um, all the bearings looked good. Everything was in good shape. Back of the pistons was fine. Really, it was just the anything above the pistons or the cylinder walls uh, that needed repair. Um, so at this point, I took the block. I cleaned it all up. I cleaned all the accessory parts up, dropped off the block at a friend's machine shop. And we went through it and determined that it needed to board over a half, uh, half a millimeter. And we'd be in good shape. So from here on, I ordered all the parts needed, um, made sure everything was clean, and we'll move on to the next episode, which is part two of me rebuilding the motor and going through everything.